The king is dead. Long live the king. My long-serving HP 17T choked on a dozen screens of deaths before shutting down for the last time. I did a diagnosis and the HP forums concluded that the CPU was fried. And just like that, we got a replacement and it's quite the replacement. Say hello to the Asus ROG Zephyrus M16. It's one sleeper of a laptop and I'll go in detail explaining why, but we need to see the unboxing first. Shout out to Gizmo Tech Store for importing this machine for me. It could have taken two weeks to get the HP Omen 17 inch, which I wanted, but they made me an offer of this more powerful machine and delivery was chopped up to just five days. <laughs> Imagine that. I love a good understated PC when it comes to design and look at how stealthy the M16 is. It's matte black with some normal looking vents considering the silicone it has in its shell. The shell itself is made from magnesium alloy which does wonders on weight. The M16 is a whole kilogram lighter than the NV17 it replaces. A kilogram. Opening it up and there you have it. All the important stickers, 11th gen Intel Core i9 and Nvidia GeForce RTX 3060 with six gigs of video memory. I mean, when I ran the full spec sheet, it's got 16 gigs of RAM with eight soldered on the motherboard and eight that's removable. Liquid metal thermal fluid for the CPU and GPU heat sinks. One terabyte M.2 NVMe SSD. And I added another on top to make it two terabytes. I mean, I had to. The display is a 16 inch 16 by 10 panel with quad HD resolution and supporting 165 Hertz refresh rate. And I have a story to tell about that refresh rate, but more specs. The power button has a built in fingerprint scanner. So when you push it to turn the PC on, it caches or saves the fingerprint till windows hello requires it. I did notice that if you want it to work every time you need to push the button and then leave your fingerprint on the button for just a second or two and it'll work out. The battery is a huge 90 watt hour unit occupying the whole bottom section of the laptop, almost edge to edge. I have not run an endurance test for laptops yet, but when gaming in performance mode, it can last about two hours. The hardware is just very thirsty. The typing experience is all right. Uh, took a bit of getting used to in terms of the size of the keyboard and the lack of a numpad to the right. It was a slight learning curve there. The key press pressure is slightly higher on the M16 compared to the NV17T, but again, it was not too hard to adapt to. What I do miss is the print screen button because I take a lot of screenshots. I mean, I can still do the full screen snips using the snipping tool, but then I have to manually save the file every time. And yet with the print screen, it saves it automatically as soon as I do the print screen. Oh, and the M16 keyboard is a lot quieter when typing than the NV17T, which I liked up until I realized that it doesn't matter at all when the fans are running because they can get very loud. The trackpad is massive, absolutely huge. And I think it's the only input part of this laptop that's taken me the most time to adapt to. Whilst it works great for the most part, it's got poor palm rejection. So when I was absent-minded, I was randomly clicking stuff or zooming in and out of stuff or changing windows. Also, because it goes so far to the bottom edge, it was a bit straining to use and I ended up pulling out an actual physical mouse. Yeah, it's HP, but that's not the point. Performance is plenty. And it should be said that the NV17T was no pushover. It had an 8th gen Intel Core i7 with 16 gigs of RAM and 4 gigs of Nvidia GeForce MX150 graphics. It booted in less than 15 seconds. But this Asus is faster, which is crazy because everything is so immediate. It's 
almost like I'm making commands using telepathy. What about the display? I have to say I miss my touchscreen, especially in Photoshop. That said, it's glorious. It's got tiny bezels all around. It is super sharp thanks to the Quad HD resolution. It's what I would call bright enough. And the colors are fantastic. I mean, it supports HDR for some pretty vibrant color. It's got a lot less light bleed from the backlight. It's a beautiful panel, comparable to the one on the 2021 MacBook 16. I mean, not as good as the MacBook, but close enough to a point where I can actually use a MacBook as a reference point. It's, it's that good. Then there is that 165 hertz refresh rate, super smooth. It's another dimension. However, as you can see, we may have an issue with my laptop. Unfortunately, it came like this out of the box and it seems to be a manufacturer's fault. So everything is fine at 60 hertz, but anything beyond that, it glitches. I tried drivers reinstalling the OS, but no change. It's been a bit annoying, especially in games, but for most of my work, I have no issues working at 60 Hz, that's what I'm used to. Flip, I didn't even talk about audio. <laughs> Again, the speakers are fantastic. They support Dolby Atmos and so they can cover you in a blanket of sound, allowing you to tell which direction the sound is coming from beyond just the left and the right. You have up, down, a bit of forward and backwards, and it's crisp too with thick mids and lows and detailed highs. The creativity and composition of the music was pretty pronounced. It made me hear stuff that I was not hearing before with my Logitech audio system. Again, close to the MacBook 16 Pro speakers, but not really better. If the M16 is, let's say, a good speaker system, the MacBook 16 Pro is a very good set of speakers. But guys, this is an Asus Republic of Gamers laptop. This means it comes with a lot more buttons you won't find on normal laptops. And to access the shiny buttons, you need to just press one. The one with the ROG logo, which opens the armory crate. So many buttons, so much power. The speedo got me hooked trying to get to the red lines of my system. I want to make sure that it can run Crisis. This PC allows for overclocking, which is pretty much running the processors at a faster speed than they are tuned to. This just makes the laptop do things faster or be able to do more things at the same time than if it wasn't. You can tweak the power you send to the CPU or the GPU to make the PC more efficient or more powerful. You can adjust the speed of the fans and how much noise they make. You can see the usage stats of the components like your RAM, your CPU, your GPU, your system apps, and your storage levels. You can even turn the startup sound of your laptop on or off and change the color of the keyboard backlight and even make the backlight cycle through a range of colors. It's just too much customization. It is its own rabbit hole if you start pushing the buttons in there. It's too much for even someone like me. I mean, I am not a specimen for an absolute power user. So I know there are a group of people out there that just, that will do justice to all these customization options and create several profiles suited to several tasks. The Asus ROG Zephyrus M16 is an absolute gem. I love the understated design. Unless you know it, it will look like a normal laptop. It's got too much performance. The bottleneck is pretty much me, the user. It comes with some cool perks like a month free of Xbox Game Pass. The experience is quality, ignoring the Windows 11 bugs from Microsoft, and it's both light and compact enough to fit in my backpack. The display is glorious, it's sharp, it's vibrant, it's bright, the colors are accurate. I hope I can get the flickering sorted out so I can go beyond 60 Hz and enjoy it even more. This is my first time owning a laptop that's not an HP. And so far I am a happy man. Again, thanks to Gizmotech Zim for hooking me up with this laptop. It's not cheap. This particular one with this spec was 2,690 US dollars. I am still recovering, but with how it performs and feels, it's definitely making up for it.
that's the Asus ROG Zephyrus M16, which I was later.